Welcome to the 100% Shiny Pokemon Hunting Location Guide using Shiny Sandwiches. We'll be going over every single one that's found in the teal mask. For this sandwich, all I'm using is one basil and then one salty Herba Mystica and one sweet Herba Mystica. If you know any other types of recipes, please throw that down in the comments below. And you should make sure you see Sparkling Power Fire and Encounter Power Fire Level 3 if you successfully have made the sandwich. You could also do this with Level 2 Encounter Power Sandwiches. It just might take a little bit longer. And one more thing before we get started, make sure to go home, go to your settings, go down to system, and then when you scroll all the way down, make sure to go ahead and turn on zoom. That way, if there's a Pokemon in the distance that you don't know the color of, you can double tap home and just zoom in to make sure that it's not a shiny. All right, let's get into it. Our first hunt is going to be taking place at the Crystal Pool. And at the Crystal Pool, as you can see, there are a ton of Slugmas that are appearing. And the cool thing about this hunt is all you have to really do is Stay away from the water because other Pokemon will start to spawn in and kind of stay towards the edges and you'll start to just see Slugmas. And it's really simple to hunt for this because all you have to do is just rotate around and around the area. Now, the shiny that you'll be looking for is more of a silver, grayish or white color, depending on how you want to really see it. So it's not going to be anywhere close and you won't be able to miss it at all. Now, something you need to be aware of when you're taking your rounds around this lake is that there are also going to be little jump and height points up here where you could have one or two spawn just like that one over there so keep that in mind on your rotations as you're going around now the reason why you want to focus on this hunt during the day is because it is a solo hunt at nighttime you'll start to have litwicks appear so then that'll start to become a dual hunt this is going to be the best location to hunt yourself a slugma so just continue to rotate until you find one. Okay, as I was rotating around, well, it started to become nighttime. As you can see, there's a Litwick right there. But look at what we got. There it is. The gray slugma. So I'm just going to go ahead, save my game. Always make sure to do that. And there it is. This is why you should subscribe because you get shinies and it's that easy. This next location is going to be for Vulpix and it's going to be really simple. All you have to do is go towards Masui Town and exit out of the east side. This is going to be one of these simple town spawns to make your life very, very easy. So you want to come up to the point where it says the change in name. So Revelers Road. And as soon as that happens, you'll start to see Vulpix spawning in the distance over here. You can just go around and look for it. Now, Vulpix Shiny is not going to be that hard to miss. It's just a little bit more yellow. So you can go back and forth when you're going through here. And as soon as you come out here, just give it a second because it does take a little bit of time for them to spawn, but you do get a a lot of them spawning to the right side. So that's a really good spot to look. You can also decide to go ahead and look straight forward, but just keep doing that back and forth until you happen to get your shiny. Now, if this kind of method does get a little boring to you, well, you can always just travel the road instead and follow the path up because the only Pokemon that'll spawn when you have your fire sandwich is going to be Vulpix. So as I'm going up, there you go. You see them just keep spawning. There's nothing else that spawns in this area besides them. Make sure to not go very fast on this road and just take your time going up and down. Make sure to zoom out as if you go too fast, they won't spawn properly. So just go nice and slow, walk around and make sure to spin your camera at a 360 angle and use the zoom in technique if something is far off in the distance and you need to confirm if it is a shiny or not. Johnny Vulpix on Reveler's Road. Here we go. Yes, there it is. Shiny Vulpix. By the way, if you want to increase your shiny luck, you should probably hit that subscribe button so it goes up and you'll know when the next shiny hunting video drops. Let me know which shiny sandwich Pokemon video you want to see next for the teal mask. Now, if you do feel like shiny hunting something else with Vulpix, you can head over to the Timeless Woods. Not only do you get Vulpix here, but you get yourself lit. Wait, wait is that shiny? What? I just. Oh, not only do you get yourself Vulpix, but you also get yourselves a possibility of getting a shiny Litwick. No way that just happened. Look at the shiny luck. Subscribe. Seriously, this is going to help you so much. Like I was saying, this is also a very good spot to go shiny hunting. And you can see that the Litwick shiny is very subtle compared to the regular one. We'll throw that on screen over here and you can get its second evolution. So just make sure to pay attention to the subtle changes and zoom in over there. As you can see in Timeless Force in the daytime, there are only just Vulpix and you don't have to deal with any Litwick. So if you want to solo hunt in the forest, this is also a great spot to go to if you need a change of scenery. 
The next Pokemon that we're going to be going for is Salandit, and it was previously in the Paldea game. This is just another location in Kitakami because the Pokemon do repeat. So there's two spots basically. You want to head over to the area of Infernal Pass, and once you arrive at Infernal Pass, you're going to want to turn around facing towards these Growlets. Uh, this is the Oni Mountain part, but you can proceed a little further, and once Oni Mountain changes its name even further down here, and you'll see the transition literally happen right in front of your eyes. Oni's Maw. Okay, we just entered Oni's Maw, and look what starts spawning to our left and straight down. It's the Landits. So there they are. Now, what you want to focus on for those who have maybe not used my other shiny guides in the Paldea region, you should be focusing on looking for a female that is white colored because they will not evolve into Salazzle unless they are a female. Otherwise, you're just getting a Salandit for life that is a male. But if that's something you want to collect, you probably should. The big problem with these Salandits are the fact that the reflection on them always makes them look like they're white. So we just have to look for something a little more extra white. So double home feature to zoom in if ever in doubt because the reflections and outlines are really weird. Daytime and nighttime don't really make any difference. So pretty much you can just go up and down this entire mountain area. Don't go too fast because they do not spawn in family packs. They're single spawns. You want to just kind of rotate around this area let them spawn. Now there's another area that's a little more closed in and let me take you over there. You're going to have to head over to the crystal pool area. Now from the crystal pool, you just want to head over into the secret cave area, which is going to be wrapping around from the bridge and hopping into this cave just like this. Now, once you arrive all the way down here, you're not really going to see any Pokemon spawns, but you will see a trainer. What you need to do is move away from the trainer just a little bit over here and when you come right back you should get a group of the landits starting to spawn now just keep in mind if it's nighttime you will have litwick spawning so during the daytime is probably the best time to try to hunt these guys especially in this cave now if you go further down we're gonna get a lot more spawning so let me just drop down you're gonna hit into the water and all the land areas you're going to see Salandit, a uh, minus this Litwick, and they will be spawning around here. If you give it a second, they will take their time to spawn, but they will spawn in. If you ever doubt the color of the shiny, just make sure to go send your Pokemon to auto battle it, because if it doesn't auto battle it, well, then that means you have a shiny Pokemon. The next Pokemon that we're going to be hunting is going to be Growlithe. Now, the cool part about Growlithe is we're going to be heading over to the Kitakami Hall. So if you got Ogre Austin unlocked, you could go right from there. Or if not, you can go from Kitakami Hall and you're going to climb to the top of this area. So right at the border of Kitakami Hall. So I like to call these town spawns, which means you walk in and out of a location to get something to spawn. But when you step right out, just like this, we have the Pokemon spawning in and you can see the Growlithe straight ahead over there. And actually, you won't believe this, but it's actually a lot of numbers. Actually, you will believe it. You're literally looking at the screen. And what we're going to be specifically searching for is a much brighter, more yellower, golden uh, Growlithe. So keep that in mind when you are doing this. So yeah, just make sure to take a look, a double home tap just to make sure that's not as shiny in the background, especially when you're doing town resets and you don't want to leave the area. You can just simply go in like this, watch them all just despawn. And as soon as you come right back out, they are going to respawn in. And with the amount showing up, and if you have a shiny charm, you're going to have a very good chance of getting a shiny to spawn pretty quick. Also, keep this in mind, there are growlets that are laying down. So there might be one in the grass that is laying down. You don't want to miss out on that. So keep going back and forth in this area until you happen to see a shiny. Another great location to hunt growlets is going to be the Infernal Pass. Now, as soon as you arrive in the Infernal Pass, you don't want to go up this white mountain, but you want to just go down this way, straight over here. And as soon as you arrive, you're going to see the amount of Growlets that just start to spawn. This is going to be Oni Mountain, connected right to that area. So if you spend your time around here, you'll start to see there is a good amount of Growlets that also spawn here. So just take a look around. You can hop on your mount if you want. You can even go up here and you'll you'll start to see these guys. They are everywhere in this area. Oh, so this is uh, very specific to Growlets. Like literally nothing else spawns here. Like look at the amount over here too. When you drop down, when you circle around the area, just make sure you're staying in the Oni Mountain area and not going anywhere else. So... 
you get bored of the town spawns, this is going to be a great spot for you to try and shiny hunt your Growlithe. Another location that you can go and get Growlithe is going to be the Moss Fell Confluence, which is going to basically be right over here at the bottom right of the map. <laughs> like, look how many also spawn in this area. It's very, very exclusive when you have the fire encounter sandwich on. So look at that. If you want to have another environment, this is another great spot. So there's not many Pokemon in the teal mass, so it does make it a lot easier when it comes to spawns to hunt down certain Pokemon. So good luck getting your shiny Growlithe. Now, Houndor is a really simple one because it was in the last game, but this is a much better hunting spot than the previous game. Just head over to the Inferal Pass, which is located right over here, just like where you went for the Growlits. Now, the difference is you're going up the mountain versus going down over there where the Growlits are. And it's really cool, actually, this entire area because you can hunt for Growlits, and when you're done, you can just move up the mountain and start going for Houndors. Anyway, you're going to be looking for a much more blue-colored Hound door just like this on the screen over here and that's going to be your indicator for finding a shiny now again because some of these don't spawn in groups they're solo spawns you want to not run through it if it was completely just a bunch of groups you can go really fast because that is the spawn rule of for how we shiny hunt if you run really fast solo spawns will not spawn properly but if there are group spawns which there are on this mountain they will immediately spawn so it depends if you want to sacrifice some solo ones and run fast so Pretty much your goal is to go all the way up the mountain. And there you go. There is a entire pack spawn. Your goal is to completely go up this mountain until you start to see slugmas. If you see slugmas, you are then reaching the point of going too far up this mountain. And it's time to turn back and rotate and go back and spawn in those other hound doors. So I'm just going up here and right about here on your map is where the cutoff is. So you can hunt this entire area all the way down up until here. So Infernal Pass, just go up and down until you get yourself a shiny hound door. Now there's another spot to hunt the hound hours uh, and it's going to be these ledges on the side over here. So what you want to do is pretty much I would say just up down to the ledge. You just want to find these little ledges here on Oni Mountain, just like this. And when you pop down over here, so this is the one where I am right over here. So it's right to the left of that. You're going to see family spawns and you're going to also see hound dooms, which is going to be really cool because it's not really solo spawns anymore. So big groups of them spawn in and you can probably run a lot faster, reset them. So you can probably back up here, go back and you get a whole nother group spawning in again. So that's really cool. Family spawns are something that makes shiny hunting a lot easier. Not only do you have to just stay in that location, but you can just continue going down. I just gave another option of, you know, what you can do. There's another family group, but definitely if you want to go for a single spawns, you can be up there. And then we go over here. There's another family spawn, a couple of single ones here. Here's another family spawn. So really cool spot if you want to just quickly do that up here. The final spot that you can hunt hound doors in is going to be the Paradise Barrens. As soon as you get here, you'll also will realize this is a great spot to hunt. It is a lot of single spawns. So keep that in mind. A lot of solo spawns. You'll get sometimes a family here and there. But this is also another good option to go and hunt. So feel free to just walk around this area, despawn them out. It's just they're everywhere here. This entire area is filled with them. So good luck getting your Hound Door and evolving it into Houndoom. Now that you got all your shiny fire type Pokemon in the Teal Mask, you should check out this video over here.